we are on Psalm 132, a song of ascents. O Lord, remember in David's favor his extreme self-denial, how he swore to the Lord, vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house, nor will I mount my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, an abode for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard it was in Ephrath. We came upon it in the region of Ya'ar. Let us enter his abode, bow at his footstool. Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Your priests are clothed in triumph. Your loyal ones sing for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a firm oath that he would not renounce. One of your own issue I will set upon your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my decrees that I teach them, then their sons also to the end of time shall sit upon your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his seat. This is my resting place for all time. Here I will dwell for I desire it. I will amply bless its store of food, give its needy their fill of bread, I will clothe its priests in victory, its loyal ones shall sing for joy. There I will make a horn sprout for David, I have prepared a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies in disgrace, while on him his crown shall sparkle. The psalm is reflecting about days past with King David who uh, desired very, very fervently once he was, uh, once he assumed the throne of Israel, that the Ark of the Covenant would find a permanent resting place. And he uh, wanted to be able to build a temple, a Beit HaMikdash, in Jerusalem, where the uh, Ark of the Covenant would be permanently situated and where the people would come and worship and where the priests would perform their sacrifices and the Levites, their Levitical duties. That's what David wanted. Uh, The psalmist uses hyperbole and says uh, he, David, practiced self-denial. He basically said, I won't eat, I won't sleep, I won't be able to rest until I know that the Ark of the Covenant will have a permanent place. Uh, The historical context of this that actually is re- referred to in verse uh, 6. We heard it, well, it, namely the ark, was in Ephrath. We came upon it in the region of Ya'ar. That is to say that once uh, the Israelites entered the promised land, the ark continued to travel from place to place uh, until it found its place in the house of David in Jerusalem But under David, the temple still would not be built because according to the book of Chronicles, God told David, I will not let you build my temple. You are a man of war with blood on your hands. Only shall your son, who inherits your throne, will be able to build the temple because he will be a man of peace. He will be a king who will not have to fight wars to Uh, to protect and to defend his throne. And so it was that it would be Solomon who would build the temple. But while David lived, the ark still had not found its permanent resting place. You can feel the anxious uh, yearnings of David conveyed and described in this psalm. And you can feel his sense that things would not be really right until there would be a temple and a permanent place for God to stay. We also know that the temple, the permanent structure built by Solomon, indeed was not permanent because it was destroyed some centuries later in 586 before the Common Era by the Babylonians. And so nothing in that sense is permanent. And even the ark would become lost and no one would ever be able to know what eventually happened to the ark and to the original tablets of the covenant 
nothing is permanent except for the permanence and the eternal nature and existence of God. That, indeed, is the only entity, the only thing that really is completely permanent, without beginning and without end. In our psalm, we have a few verses that are recited during the Simchat Torah celebration. Simchat Torah is the holiday, it's the festival, when we celebrate the completion of the annual cycle of the reading of the, of the Torah and ending with the end of Deuteronomy and then beginning with the very beginning of Genesis. And that is marked on Simchat Torah, which when I'm recording this now, actually, Simchat Torah was just observed a few days ago. And a part of that Simchat Torah liturgy involves a section called the Hakafot, or processionals, where we take the Torah scrolls out of the Ark and parade them around the sanctuary while people take the, the edges of their fringes, their prayer shawl, or their prayer books and touch the Torah and kiss it while the Torahs are going around, singing songs of joy and singing uh, uh, melodies and songs uh, that revolve around the theme of the celebration of the Torah. Alas, this year, this was not able to happen because of COVID-19. And we were restricted from having in-person celebrations. Some synagogues were able to have outdoor celebrations. Some synagogues did so indoors with safe uh, and careful restrictions in light of the pandemic. Other places, unfortunately, neglected and ignored patently the, uh, uh, the rules uh, and restrictions and went ahead and held celebrations as if it were like any other year. And those synagogues became, some of them anyways, uh, were places of risk where infections uh, uh, either developed or from where the, the infections were spread. And that, that is unfortunate. But we, like King David, who yearned for that temple where God's Ark of the Covenant would stay, we also continue to yearn to return to our houses of worship, to be able to celebrate and worship in those structures where we can gather together and be a community. And up until now, it seems as if that time is still not yet at hand, at least for many of us. The verses in our psalm that are recited as part of that hakafot, or the processional celebrations, are, Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Kuma Adonai Menuchatecha Atav Aaron Uzecha. Your priests are clothed in triumph. Your loyal ones sing for joy for the sake of your servant David. Do not reject your holy one. And because we were not, or in light of the fact that we were not able to do this publicly this year, I would like to sing these verses for you the way they are chanted in the synagogues on Simchat Torah that we were not able to do this year, but God willing, next year. It goes like this. Kuma Adonai li menucha techa, atav aron uzecha, kohanecha yil bishu tzedek, vachasidecha yiraneinu, ba'avur david avdecha, al tashev pene meshichecha. As I said, it is our most fervent wish that next year, we will be able to gather together on all of these festival, festivals and festive occasions and Sabbaths and weekdays for regular weekday prayer to be able to worship together, to be in close proximity physically as a community, to be able to celebrate God's presence in our midst, to thank God for all of the blessings that we enjoy, and to know that even if the 
structures that we build are not permanent, even if that is the case, because buildings come and go. They get sold, they get uh, bought or taken over by other places of worship. But even in those cases, we know that God's existence is permanent, that God's eternal nature graces and blesses us all with hope and with everlasting faith. Thank you.